Hi, I was recently editing some tracks for another Wash song that we're currently working on and I needed to do a lot of fade in, fade outs and crossfades and such. And as part of that I discovered the new crossfades editor in Cubase 12. So I decided to look into fades a bit more in general and make this tutorial about it. Since you guys really seem to like my Cubase tutorials and I promise there will be something new in here for you as well. So hold on to your hats as we dive into fades in Cubase. Let's go. So basically a fade is a way to gradually increase or decrease the volume at the start or end of an event or an audio clip. Or you can also fade between two events, in which case it's called a crossfade. Let's look at an example in this project. If we look at the red track, you can see as soon as I bring my mouse pointer above one of the events, it shows the fades in the event. And over here you can see a fade that gradually fades in the volume. Here you see a crossfade between two events and over here you see a fade out. So if we listen to the fade out for example. Keep the chain on the tracks while we so it basically fades out the volume at the end of the event. Now there are two kinds of underlying techniques for creating fades in Cubase. And the first kind of technique is using event-based fades. That's what you saw in this example here actually. All of those fades were just on the event. Because the second underlying technique is that you can also have audio clip based events. And that means that all events that use that audio clip will have the same fade. An advantage of audio clip based fades is that they are calculated during editing. Whereas event based fades are calculated real time. So when your project is playing and when you're down mixing and all that. So it actually takes some processing power away from your CPU that you cannot use for other things. Now there are four kinds of fades in Cubase. And the first kinds of fades are fade ins and fade outs. That's what you saw in the example just now. And those fade ins and fade outs can both be event based as well as audio clip based. The second type of fade is the crossfade where you fade between two overlapping events. And crossfades can only be event based in Cubase. The third type of fades are auto fades, where you have a special configuration in Cubase that you can set to always have fades on every event. And you can do that for the project globally, but you can also do that for a certain track only. Auto fades are always event based as well. Now the last type of fades that you can have in Cubase are the volume envelopes. And that means that you can vary the volume of an event or an audio clip, not just at the beginning or the end, but also somewhere in the middle, anywhere you want in the event or audio clip. Now, before we look at the practical sides of how to create all these fades, if you like these kinds of videos or find them useful, please give it a like for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to know when I publish another video, just ring the little bell icon and you'll get a notification. I almost always do premieres for my videos in which I'm there myself. And if you push that bell icon, you'll be notified of when there is a premiere. I also have lots of affiliate links in the description below to any of these shops. So in case you intend to buy anything at any of those shops, if you click an affiliate link first, I will get a small commission without any extra cost to you, which is a great way to support this channel. Now back to the fades. Let's start by looking at event-based fade-ins and fade-outs. So I'm going to continue in the orange track in this Cubase project now. And as soon as I hover above an event, you can see that these event handles here get displayed. So this way I can do an event based fade in. Over here I can do an event based fade out. Now if you don't like that you only see the fade handles when you hover above the event, you can change that by edit, preferences, event display audio, show event volume curves always. If I turn that on, you see that it's now constantly showing the fades in both events, even though I'm not hovering over the event with the mouse. Now it's also possible to do these fades with a mouse wheel if you like to. Again, that's a preference. In editing audio, use mouse wheel for event volumes and fades. If I enable that, you see when I select the event and I push shift at the same time, I can now do this with my mouse wheel over here as well. And if I move my mouse wheel without pushing shift, I actually move the main volume handle here. And let's get rid of these fades. Because another way to do fades is by using the range selection tool. In this case, I'm selecting the part that I do not want to fade, but I want to fade start at the end of the selected range. So over here, I can go to audio fades, fade out from range end. And you see that it has added a fade. I'll undo that now. But it's also possible to just select the part of the event in which you want to fade. Audio fades. Same option, fade out from range end. 
And now it'll just do the fade over the selected range, basically. The only snag is that when you try to do that at the beginning of the event, it doesn't seem to work. Because over here you would then select fade into range start and there's no fade. But when I move this event a little bit and make sure that I start the range just before the event, it does work. So this is only a problem if you have an audio event which starts right at the beginning of the project. It's also possible to apply some default fades. Audio fades, apply standard fade in. I need to zoom in a bit to make sure that you can actually see that fade, which is a very short one. Let's get rid of it again. And in the same way, I could also apply a standard fade out to the second event on this track. Now, if you want to change the length of the fade out, for example, for example, you want this to be the standard fade out, then you can double click to open the fade editor and you need to double click to the right of the fade. So not over here, because then you will get the audio editor. So I double click over here. This opens the fade editor. And when you push as default, then from now on, the default fade out will have the length that I'm using over here now. Now with the fade editor, you can also edit the fade if you wanted to. You can also choose one of the pre-existing fade curves. You can use a fade preset if you have saved some fade presets. And if you then push apply, it will apply the fade. For example, like this. You see the fade is now a really weird shape. Let's restore that. It's also possible to change the curve type. The standard is linear interpolation. This is damped spline interpolation and this is spline interpolation. And this really deals with the math that's behind the way these fades are calculated in real time. You can try out the difference, but I don't think there is much. So I always leave it to linear interpolation. Now, if you have set up lots of fades in your event or multiple events, you can get rid of them by selecting the events and going to audio, fades, remove fades, and your events are fadeless again. Next up, fade ins and fade outs on an audio clip. Now to get clip based fade ins and fade outs, let me first copy this event to over here. And then I need to select the range where I want to do the fade in. And I can then go to audio, processes, fade in. And two things now happened. I got an editor for editing the fade and Cubase is warning me that other events use this same audio material. Now, if I say new version, then I'm going to introduce the fade only on this one event to the right over here after it has generated a new audio clip for this event. So let me not do that and show you what happens if I just do it in the existing audio clip. So I say continue. So I can now edit the fade over here. And it will keep bugging me by the fact that I'm editing an audio clip which is used in multiple events now. But you can see that both on the left over here and in the event over here, I get a fade in. And if I wanted to listen to it, I could use the audition button over here. And if I close the direct offline processing, you see that I now have two events referring to the same audio clip with a fade at the beginning. Now, if I want to get rid of this fade in the audio clip, I can select one of the events for the audio clip, go to direct offline processing, and just remove the fade in. No, I do not want to create a new version. I want to do it for both events using this audio clip. And you can see that the fade is now gone in both events using this audio clip. And now onto crossfades, which are used to get a smooth transition from one event to the next on the same track. Let's have a look in the project. So for example, over here, you can see that I have two events which are already partly overlapping. And if I now select the events and I go audio, fades, crossfades, you can see that crossfade is created exactly in the parts of the events that were overlapping. Now there's also a handy shortcut setup for crossfades, which is an X, which I will use from now on. So let's get rid of the crossfade by undoing it. Now in order for Cubase to create a crossfade, the events must be overlapping or they must be very, very close. Because for example, if I create a gap between these events and then push the X button, Cubase will warn and tell us that the selected events cannot be crossfaded. The gap between the audio events is too large. However, if I now make the gap very small, that they're almost overlapping, and then push X, Cubase will create a crossfade because these events could be extended to be overlapping, and Cubase does that for you, and the crossfade will be the length of the default crossfade. So let's undo that again. Now what you can also do is use the range tool to get a crossfade. For example, I can set a certain range and say, okay, I want the crossfade to be here. Cubase will basically overlap the events and create the crossfade at the size that we indicated. If I want to change this size, 
I can, for example, select a greater range. And if I then push X, I get the crossfade editor, but more about that later. But if I just want to extend the range without going to the editor, I can do audio, fades, adjust fades to range. And again, we have a bigger crossfade. Now, if we go to the yellow audio over here, you can see that these events are also all pretty close, but there is actually no audio material. Even if I put them really close, Cubase will refuse to create a crossfade because there is simply no audio material for them to crossfade. Because this is just really the end of the recorded file, and this is really the begin of the recorded file, so there cannot be a crossfade until they're partly overlapping. So let's make them overlap a little bit, select both, push X, and now a crossfade is possible. Now for the next demonstration, I will make a little copy of this event and move it over here. And I will extend this track a little bit. And let's now edit crossfades. And this is actually the new crossfades editor in Cubase 12, which has a lot of detailed features to edit your crossfade. For example, the nice thing is that you can see both audio events at the same time. And you can basically adjust crossfades with these handles over here. Move it, size it, size it from yeah, whatever side you want. This is also the place where you can set the default crossfade. If you, for example, wanted to change the length of the default crossfade, push this as default and then crossfade, which we currently have set up, will be used as default. You can also use presets for your crossfade if you have saved them or save the current setup as a preset, or you can go back to the default crossfade. Now the properties of the fade out on the first track and the fade in on the next track are displayed in the middle. And you can change those curves if you want to. Again, you have the various mathematical options to calculate the fades. You can manually edit the curves. Now you can edit the numbers over here if you want to, but I usually just prefer to edit over here, which makes it a lot more what you see is what you get. Now you can also nudge the fades. And how you nudge the fades and what happens is determined by this setting over here. So let's set it to 1 64th of a note that we want to nudge. You can see that it nudges by 1 64th of a note. But what you also see is that the audio is actually moved here on the second track. And if that's not what we want, but we want to move the fade instead of the audio, we need to select this option. Right now you can see that the fade is moved over the audio by 1 64th of a note. Now, if we have set this to move audio, then this chaining mode gets interesting because this determines what happens to the audio events after the current event, the second event that will be moved when we nudge the fade. So right now it is set to until end. And that means that all audio events until the end of the track will be moved when we nudge the fade while moving the audio. So I'm not sure that you will actually be able to see this. Yes, you will be able to see this. You also see the second event to the right moving over there. Now, if you turn off symmetric fades, what happens is that you can actually start the fade in before you start the fade out. And in that case, yeah, the splice point gets moved, which is the offset between these two different splice points of the fade now. So let's go back to symmetric fades. And over here, you have the option to use equal gain or equal power. And when you set equal gain, it will adjust the fade curves so that the summed fade in and fade out amplitudes are the same all along the crossfade region. And this can be beneficial for short crossfades. And when you set it to equal power, you see that fade curves slightly change because the energy, the power of the crossfade is constant all along the fade region. Let's go back to the default. So the middle section we already discussed. Now it's also possible to turn on auto zoom. So whatever you do to the fade, it will zoom in again to display the crossfade in the middle. You can also turn on auto scroll so that when you move the fade, it will move it back to the middle of the display over here. Now you can also addition the crossfade. I can't let you hear that now because my screen capturing is set up to capture the cue send and not the actual output of Cubase. But in case you wanted to audition the crossfade, you can just play the fade out part of the first event, just play the fade in part of the second event, or actually play the crossfade. And then if the crossfade is pretty short, you probably want to set a certain pre-roll and post-roll so that you can hear the audio before and after the actual crossfade. Otherwise, you will just hear a very short crossfade. Now, if you have multiple crossfades in your track, then you can also move move to the next crossfade by means and project selection follows fade means that if you move to the next crossfade then actually the event in the project window will be selected that contains that crossfade. 
So a whole lot of options to edit your fades, which are new in Cubase 12. Now the third type of fades in Cubase are auto fades. Let's have a look. So if you right click on an audio track, you can see the menu auto fades settings. And this basically determines whether you want auto fades for all events on this audio track. Right now it is set to use the project settings, which I'll show you in a minute. But let's assume that we don't want the project settings for the events in this audio track. So I'll disable this. I can indicate here that I want automatic fade ins, fade outs, and or crossfades for all events on this track. Over here I can set the length for those crossfades and over here I can set the curve shapes for the fade in, fade out and for the crossfade. Now these same settings are also available on the project menu and if you enable them over here they will be applied to all events in the project globally. Now these fades are by the way not displayed in the event like you have for all the regular manual fades that you add to events. But they will be applied when your project is playing and when it is exported. Now the last type of fades in Cubase are the volume envelopes and these can be event based as well as clip based. So let's have a look at the event based volume envelopes first. So I'm now going to work on the yellow track. I first select the event and then I select the draw tool which you can also do over here. And I can now basically draw a volume envelope in this event with any freedom that I want. You can see that the envelope also gets reflected in the wave shape. And if I want to remove a certain point, I can just click on it and drag it out of the event and it will be gone. Or I can also remove the entire volume curve by going audio, remove volume curve. So this gives you total freedom creating volume changes in the event wherever you want them. Now this can also be done for an audio clip. Again, you first select the event that you want to work on. Then you go to Audio, Processes, Envelope. Cubase will again warn me that there are multiple events using this clip. In this case, let's actually create a new version. And you can see that it has a bit of a preset over here now of an envelope, which I can change in whatever way I want. Again, I can remove a point by dragging it out of the range and add a point by just clicking on it and we get an event with a volume envelope inside the audio clip. Over here you can see that the audio is now different from, for example, the one on the other tracks. You can also see that in the pool. If I click Ctrl P, you can see that there's one event using the audio clip where I did the volume envelope and the other events are using the audio clip without the volume envelope. Both of them are still based on the same audio file. If I want to remove this volume envelope, I can again go to audio direct offline processing and just get rid of this processing step and the envelope is gone again. Okay, that was all I had to share about Cubase fades and a little bit more. Now, if you like these deep dives into Cubase functionality, I have a lot of videos on my channel that do that and I have combined them in a playlist which I'll link in the description below. One of those videos is about how to use the new Dolby Atmos functionality in Cubase 12. So check it out over here. Enjoy and see you soon. <music>